On today's Visual Studio Toolbox, Justin Clairbird is going to show us some really cool extensions that you are going to want. Hi, welcome to Visual Studio Toolbox. I'm your host, Robert Green, and joining me today is Justin Clairbird. Hey, Justin. Hi, Robert. Thanks. Welcome back on the show. Thanks for having me on. It's good to be back here Justin's again. Justin's been on the show uh, several times showing extensions, and uh, I think the last time you were here, you showed the productivity power tools. That's right, yes. And uh, Today you're going to show some extensions that you wrote. Yeah, some thanks. Cool in, in the past, things. I've shown off some of the stuff that Microsoft have put out, and Productivity Power Tools was supported by us, uh, as well as some stuff we've done in the extensibility team. Mm -hmm. But on the side, I've been developing my own extensions, uh, things that I wanted built into the product. Um, so, and over the last year or so, I've built a bunch of extensions. Mm -hmm. And today, I'm delighted to come on and show you and the audience uh, and these, some of these extensions and what they can do. And I've been saying for for the past many years, uh, the productivity power tools are my favorite extension, but you're going to show us an extension that's going to supplant that as my new favorite. I hope so. I've got quite a lot here, if it, and uh, maybe there's some extensions in here that you're going to like even more than the ones you've seen before. Cool. So uh, here we have on the marketplace, I'll just show you right now. If you go to the marketplace, Visual Studio Marketplace, you can search for extensions by me or search for any general extensions. Mm -hmm. These are the ones that I've published recently. Um, you can see there's hot commands, hot source, hot tips, hot settings. These are my hot extensions. Yes. Uh, I'm going to go through many of these today uh, and I'm going to start by reviewing hot commands. Hot commands is an extension that delivers shortcuts and commands to the editor. The lets you shortcut to toggle comments. I love it already. Right. There's a lot of shortcuts that people want to use inside their editor, uh, and we haven't delivered them all in Visual Studio yet. So this extension delivers a few of them, including toggle comment, mm -hmm. duplicate selection, go to last edit location, join lines, format code, increase selection and decrease selection. These are all very powerful. So let's go and jump right in, and I'll show you how, how they all work. I'll even use the source code for hot commands right. to demonstrate because it's a reasonable source code base. Oh, now, what's happened here oh. is a tip of the day. Tip of the day. Did you know you can press Shift Alt Plus to expand selection and Shift Alt Minus to contract selection? This is one of my other extensions I was planning on showing later, but it's popped up now because on okay. solution load, while you're busy waiting for your solution to load, you can read a tip. And if you like the tip, you can click Next Tip and See another tip that Control Ooh. Shift L will delete a line. Did you know that? No. Whereas I Control didn't. L will delete a line, but it puts it in your copy. And are these tips from the extensions you created, or are these tips in the product itself? This this tip of the day is part of the Hot Tips tip extension that I wrote, and okay. I have provided the tips for this. And, Got it. Uh, and okay. over time, we'll be adding more and more tips, so you can learn more useful things about the product that you might not have already known. Sweet. So I'll close out of this now. Um, here, here I am in my code base. I'm looking at a method here. Uh, let's see, I'm going to demonstrate toggle comment. Uh, if you want to comment out some lines of code, let's say I want to take out this block here. In fact, let's say I want to take out this whole, whole block here. In the old days, you could you can press home and you can press shift down. You can select the block and then remember one of two shortcuts, control KC for comment or control KU for uncomment. Or if you don't memorize keyboard shortcuts, you can just go look for the icons. That is very handy. If you like to use a mouse and want to fiddle around with tiny little buttons, you can go up there. Sure. But I find it much more useful to hit a single keystroke, which is the toggle comment. Actually, so that you can see my keystrokes, I'm going to turn on the Karnak keystroke viewer. So you'll oh, be able to see okay. which keys I'm using as I press them. So if that's working, let's see if this works. I'm going to press control slash. And that's the oh, universal key for comment. And it comments nice. the whole lot. And when I press control slash again, it uncomments it. Love it. Handy. Also, if I don't know which lines I want to comment and which ones I don't want, it has the feature where on a single line, if you press comment, it will move down a line. So I can comment out that line. I'm now on the next line. Ooh. And I can repeatedly comment. Uh -huh. And that has the advantage or disadvantage of toggling anything that was previously commented. Handy oh, if you that's want the way to. It works. So I'm going to show you the next feature and how it combines. Let's say I want to take this lot of text. I want to duplicate that. Control D duplicates that text mm. without mucking with my copy paste buffer. Mm -hmm. And then if I have this lot, comment those two out, and I start working with these ones. And when I'm finished with those, I can uncomment and recomment those two. So it's cool. a lot easier to work with yep. the toggle comment feature. Now we've worked straight into the next feature, which is the duplicate code. A duplicate selection. Mm -hmm. Now on Control D, I'm going to clear these lines, which as we learned from tip of the day is Control Shift L, deletes those lines. 
so that's a delete line key f in Visual Studio. But let's say, uh, what was I going to demonstrate? Duplicate code. I'm going to change this method here slightly. So let me ask you a question first. That what is that? Oh right, that's a screwdriver. This this is a, a new feature. It's, it, it's built a, into Visual Studio. Yes, in Visual uh, Studio. It, it, what it indicates is it's like a light bulb. Uh -huh. and typically, light bulbs show things that we recommend you do. In this case, it's just showing that there are tools available. Something you can do. Let's press Alt Enter, uh -huh. and we'll find out what those tools are. So, change signature. In this case, it's giving me an easy access to the change signature uh -huh. dialog, which also I could get by clicking on with the mouse or mm -hmm. using the drop down to see what other things are available. Perhaps and that's that was added. I'm not sure whether that came out in Visual Studio 15.7 or 15.8. I'm currently okay. running the 15.8 preview. Okay. Uh, and we've got that running there right. at the moment. Cool. Meanwhile, let's look at duplicate code. I want to take this code block and change it. So I'll press select it, control D for duplicate. Mm -hmm. And now I can do all sorts of things with it. Firstly, I can comment it out with the keyboard shortcut that we had before. Or I can start changing the method parameters, give it a different name, call it initialize2. And away I go. So duplicate code is handy to duplicate a, a whole block. And you can do it multiple times, especially handy if you've got dealing with data. It comes in really handy. Let me just show you and the users where it's really handy. Let's say you're dealing with a VSCT file, a properties file. I want to bring in a new property. And I'll give it a GUID. And uh, let's say I've got a magic GUID here, or, or, or a command, duplicate selection. Now, if I want to use that thing that I've just copied, I've just copied that into my mm -hmm. paste buffer, and now I need, to, I need to make a new command placement. I don't want to be, have to say copy paste to duplicate this or else I'll lose right. what's in my buffer. So I duplicate code like that, that then I just nice. paste. And that's the, that the beauty of handy. that. And, then I, and I'll have to do that in my symbols, my other places all throughout this file, so it's nice not to have to lose what was in my paste buffer. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, Switching back, um, duplicate code also and works. You know, have you been asked for a, a, a uh, duplicate buffer? So you can have multiple things in the duplicate buffer, or is there only one? Uh, well, there's multiple things in a copy-paste buffer. Right. And, and just in case the users aren't aware, if I did want to um, copy many things, I could copy this and then later copy this. If I wanted to paste them both down here, I can press Control-Shift-V instead of Control-V, and it cycles through all the items that I've previously pasted. Okay. Um, but the duplicate's purpose is simply to duplicate whatever is selected. Okay. Or if nothing is selected, we'll duplicate the line. And that's quite handy. Okay. So that's duplicate code. Now, duplicate code did get built into Visual Studio in 15.7. So users oh, of 15.7 can use that today. But if users are on uh, older versions or they're using Visual Studio 2015, they can use hot commands to get duplicate code available okay. to them. But yes, we're starting to build these things into the product, which is good. Nice. Another feature we built into the product that is also in hot commands is expand selection. The idea of expand selection is it helps you increasingly select blocks of code. For instance, if I want to take this piece of text, get the string or even the whole line, I can press, now what is the magic keys on this one? Uh, in the product, it's Alt Shift Plus. And I can repeatedly press Alt Shift Plus to get larger and larger blocks and Alt Shift yeah. Minus to decrease those blocks. As I increase the selection, it goes up to the next block, the next that's block, built all into, the that's whole in method. The product. Y yeah. We, need, uh, we need to do a show on these types of things. We're going to do a a, a tips and tricks show. Right. Okay. So, so that's uh, and and again, this is in the product now. That one came into Visual Studio in fifteen point six. Okay. Uh, so people can use that on Alt Shift Plus in in hot commands. The shortcut that I created for it because there were no good shortcuts was Control Shift Square Bracket square bracket, which is horrible, <laughs> but I'll demonstrate. It's like running with your fingers. I think it's one, two, expand with left bracket, right bracket, and then to decrease, left bracket, left bracket, left bracket. So okay. that's how we use expand selection. Got it. Very useful if you want to uh, take a piece of text. I want this line. Grab, grab the line. Where am I? It took a while, and then I can duplicate mm -hmm. that across to itself. Let's see what other features there are. Uh, we've got... Um, I'm going to hold off go to last edit location because it's so cool it deserves the last one. All right. Join lines, increase selection. Oh, okay. Let's move members up and down. If I want to take my cursor to the top of the page, I'm using my keyboard, I can press Control Alt up and it's now selected the, uh, this line here. If I press Control Alt up again, oops, uh, I've jumped to the next. It's difficult to see 
uh, where my carrot is. I wonder if I can select it, but it moves. You can oh. see my current line jumps yeah. jumps members, and if I yep. want to jump up, 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 and keep going up and up through all the different members, oh, and then nice. it rotates to the last member in the file. Uh, this is mm. particularly useful if you're actually in the yeah. middle or bottom of a, of a member or of a class and yep. you want to edit the signature, you press mm -hmm. Control alt up and then you're on the signature line. Um, but now we've also combined with this. Oh, I should mention, that feature has always been in Visual Studio and it's, under, it's on the edit menu, next method and previous okay. method. But there are no shortcuts mapped to it by default. So if you simply map shortcuts, control alt down arrow and up arrow, you get that. We built our own into uh, hot commands as well, which is slightly different in that it will go to the class and namespace. Got it. For those who want to know about mapping shortcuts, and we'll get into this a bit later, but under tools, options, keyboards, you can put in a command that you need, like edit.next method. And then you can map a shortcut to it here, mm. control alt uh, down, and then press it once and then you can hit the assign button. Okay. We'll be looking into those keyboard shortcuts a bit more later. But now let me show you the power of move method. So here's what, what I'll often do. I've, here's a fun flow that'll include them all. I'm going, I'm going to start off here and I want to increase selection on this. So I'll, I'll get this whole method. Now I want to duplicate that method. We have a strange behavior where it doesn't take the whole line. Now from here I want to rename the method, new method. And then I want to move it to the bottom of the file. So this move member is Control Alt Shift down, 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 and I just move this member all the way to the bottom, Ooh. or up a bit, down a bit, wherever I like, uh -huh. and I can move the members up and down through the file to reorder them. So it's a, it comes in a little, lot easier than having to select the whole thing, cut the method, take yes. it out, put it back in. You get errors as soon as you take it you out. Do, this way, it's just because you let go of the mouse button before you're where you need to be, or you wind up pasting scissors. it in the middle of a line of code. Exactly. And you have to undo. Yes. So that's the move member, and, and we might be building move member into Visual Studio. Many of these features the team are looking to implement sure. over time. Mm -hmm. Let's see, format code, uh, well, that, that's a, a simple one. If you have a selection of lines and they're uh, badly formatted, whatever you've selected will become formatted. Uh, what, what's the shortcut for it? Format code, shortcut is Control-Alt-F, that sounds sensible. There, format. However, if you have nothing selected, Control-Alt-F will format the whole document. So it's a switch, whereas currently today we have two separate commands control for that. Control-K, Control-F. It's one of the few that I've memorized. Control-K-F will do the selection and Control-K-D yep. will do the document, whereas this single command will do ah, selection. Okay. If you have a selection, document elsewise. Mm -hmm. Nice. Um, if you want to bring, bring some text together, let's say, let's say I had this split up over multiple lines and I've decided I want them all on one line. Join lines, Control-Shift-J just brings all the lines up together. And if you're trying to <coughs> concatenate a whole lot of things, um, mm -hmm. you can repeatedly call that and uh, get your whole function up on one line. But we don't want to do that. That's a bit ugly. So instead, we'll do uh, format document and get all that back again. Yep, I made a mess of my file here. <laughs> now, um, what other features are in hot commands? Uh, move member up, decrease, increase selection, join lines. Okay, now finally I can show you go to last edit location. This is super handy. Let's say I'm working around in here mm -hmm. and I'm trying to work out what sort of uh, command ID I'm going to need in here. I don't know which <coughs> one it is. So I start navigating around. I go to the top of the page. I don't see anything up here I want. Right. So I, I go to over this file here and I'm looking for the symbols. I found some commands here. There, yeah, that's what I want. And I'll use expand selection to, to oops, went too far. Expand selection to capture that whole thing. And now I'll copy that. Now, where was I? Oh, was, which what file was file I? file were you in? Now, I can press back, 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 back. Was it seven times, six times? When do I stop? I'm not sure. But with a single keystroke, Control Shift Backspace, puts me exactly where I was. And now expand selection on that one. And, I, and I'm, I'm straight away, I've got uh, what I need. Oops, I hit the minus, and now I can paste that value in there. Nice. So go to last edit location. <coughs> I really love that feature, and uh, we might be bringing that one in the product soon too. It's, it's even handy if you just go to the top of the page, you just want to go straight back where you are. Mm -hmm. Control shift backspace, and it will put it back in the page. So those are all the features in hot commands. And does that have a, uh, will that keep track of multiple places you've been, or just the very last one? I have it working just on one. Okay. It's so complicated to try to get it to <laughs> capture multiple. You can okay. close files. Things might not exist anymore. Uh, I'll give you one. All right. <laughs> it's handy. I'll take it. Yeah, it's better than nothing. Okay, now let's have a look at the next extension. 
Hot settings. Hot settings brings the ability to control many settings that are otherwise hidden in Visual Studio. Let's talk about some of them. These line numbers here, these, mm -hmm. these margins. Um, sometimes people don't want to see the line numbers. Yeah. Pop quiz, do you know how to turn them off? Yeah, I go to quick launch. Good, good. And I type line numbers. Line numbers. All right. And now, now which one it is? Down. Line them off. Line them off. Very handy. Now that took a little while, but really what I want to do is just right click there and say line numbers off. Ooh, even better. <laughs> How's that? So <laughs> what I've built is a context menu that's in place, where you oh. want what you want. So I can even turn off the breakpoint margin. Uh -huh. Uh, so I don't see my breakpoints anymore. Uh, the light, the selection margin gets rid of all my yellow stuff. I'm running git diff margin, which is showing me the blue and green. Um, I will turn those back on again and then show you that if you want to, you can clear them all with one go using the hide editor margins. And you, you gain a bit more space mm -hmm. that way in your editor. And then you can restore those hidden margins back again. It, uh, I've added, oh, what else? Is it outlining showing up in there? No. Over here, we can right click and hit the view menu. This is a new view menu. I'm not running the latest version. It's missing some, some commands. But I'll show you what it's got. Um, view full screen. That's kind of handy. Uh, it just exposes that, that command, which is otherwise available in Alt Shift Enter. Yep. Uh, for users who want to activate a right click with the keyboard, by the way, it's Shift F10. So when I press Shift F10, and then you can look at the little underlined letters like that V there, mm -hmm. and I can press V to get the view menu. Cool. Uh, let's see. Auto hide all will hide all windows. Ooh, view white space is nice because that one's hard to find. Oh yes, it is. That's right. Um, also, word wrap is exposed here, mm -hmm. so we can um, hide the navigation bar. Turn that one off. Most people don't know where that is. <laughs> or even this code lens stuff. If you want to hide code lens, view. Then what we should do is get the latest version of the extension. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look. Um, so this, here's how we acquire the extensions, by yep. the way. This is good. If you want to get one of these extensions, like hot settings, go to tools, extensions, and updates. Now, what version are we running here? 1.2.0. We'll switch over to the marketplace. See what version they've got over here. One, oh, oh. Looks like I might need to upload, upload a more recent version. Okay. Uh, well, we'll come back to that technical right. challenges. Um, but I'll keep showing off the features. <coughs> so there are a bunch of things you can turn on and off. Uh, structure guidelines. Uh, that's an, it's very hard to see. I'm not sure if you can make out yep. the uh, that's lines That's a here. very cool feature. If you don't like them, you can turn them off. So this really helps you clear all the, all the visual elements on the screen. Mm -hmm. the, the white space is very noisy. Um, so uh, the, uh, what else is there? Hide editor distractions. We'll get rid of them all. Okay. So, um, hide editor margins does what we spoke about before. Are the glyphs here, Oops, are those considered? Which, where? Mm -hmm. oh, hide that. The, under let's, the, let's restore under the margins. bar. Ah, uh, right, that yes. Thing, so the smudge or whatever. Uh, that I, there's a few things I'm yet to build into it. I have a work list. Uh, we, I've built many of the features, but I'm also hoping to expose those ones you spoke about. Um, okay. There's automatic delimiter highlighting. Where are we? IntelliSense squiggles. So that's squiggles, what we're talking okay. about. So and the ones that are just letting you know you, you could do something different. You might want to be able to hide those. You might, and, and highlight references to yeah. symbols under <coughs> curses. There's okay. still a few distractions, okay. like, like how these have gone gray. Um, we're going to build some more things into it, but for now, at least it does give you many of the things that are otherwise hard to find. Word mm -hmm. Does anybody know where Word Wrap is? Or View White Space? And by the way, if you are interested, they are under Edit Advanced over here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, many other things. Oh, let's talk about this. There's one called Track Active Items. It's um, what it, what it, and I'll sh I built a button for it. Let's jump straight into it. Uh, it's not there. I must have the old version of the extension. I'm not sure what's going on. So, I'm going to spin up the working copy of Hot Settings. Uh, and I guess I'll need to keep it updated on the marketplace. But I'll, so. I'll spin up a debug version so we can see the, the real <laughs> stuff that does work. Uh, no tips to show. Start again. All right. If you, if you see all your tips, you get to see the tips all over again, which is nice. All right. um, loading. And there's a Control-T will open the GoToAll search box. All right. So Hot Settings here. I'm going to spin up a debug instance of this. No, I, I'm in the middle of doing work. I'll have to abandon that. All right, that's fine. By the time, uh, I'll, I'll it should be up by the time we, this goes live? Yeah, what I will show you is there's a, there's a button here that's okay. on the Solution Explorer that when pressed will keep 
key, we'll track active items in the solution. There's an option under the project for track active item in solution. And when this mm -hmm. is checked, what it means is that as I move to a different file, the Solution Explorer tracks which file I'm on. Yep. Um, so I've built a button that sits up in the, in the Solution Explorer toolbar that when pressed will give you that feature, oh, okay, which is cool. nice. Yep. And, f and also, f finally, my favorite part of it all is if you're interested in what this squiggle does, you can look down on the bottom at the status bar and it'll tell you what error you've got. Oh. Now, what error have we got? I'll press Control shift f 12 to go to the next error. This one says argument two cannot convert Ooh. from int to something. Nice. Isn't that handy? That there are, is nice. Alternatively, the only other ways to see that information is to hover your mouse over yep, it, which is great if you like moving your mouse and waiting sure. a fraction. Or you can press control KI, which gives you information. It's, um, but it's nice that every time you hit a squiggle, you can just throw your eyes to the bottom of the status bar yep. and see that. Um, so as, as we jump from error to error, oh, I don't have many errors in this file, so it's uh, it's hard to, to bring that up. I wonder if I was to cause some. Can I have a private class? Will that cause more errors? It, oh, it did. Um, uh, so, so let's see, what errors? If we click on here, elements defined in namespace cannot be explicitly declared, and that's shown right down there on the status bar. Nice. With this feature, I'm going to stop and talk about it. It's, it's hard to describe how useful it is to have that information available just with a glance of your eyes at the bottom of the bar. Um, so I encourage people to try that one out. Um, even if there are mouse ways of doing things, and there's also the error list way of, of getting things well, there's open. There's, there's no doubt that if you can master the keyboard shortcuts, you can save massive amounts of time if you just add it up over and over and over again. Well, that's it's like a good run point. to cursor, right? You look at that and you say, oh, well, that's, all right, that saves me a second. Yeah. But if you save a second 10,000 times, yeah. you've saved an awful lot of time. That's true. But in this one, it doesn't even require a keyboard shortcut. Yeah. So that's what I like. It, it's right there and available to yep. you. So that's hot settings. Okay. Speaking of keyboard shortcuts, wait, actually, we're going to get to some of those soon. But now I'm going to talk to you about controlling the IDE. Uh, I want to open and close various windows. Let's say I want to get that error list open. I actually struggled before. I pressed Control alt e and I got the exception list instead. Um, where am I? The, uh, it can be tricky to know where all the windows are, mm -hmm. how to open them, how to close them, and particularly to do it with the keyboard. Yep. So I've built a, an extension called Hot Windows, and I'll bring, bring to it now. Hot Windows gives you a whole bunch of features that let you open and close windows, find windows that were really recently open, and keyboard shortcuts for interacting with them. So I'll get in and demonstrate how we use them now. Let's see. First, I've introduced a status bar button down here. It says, find your recent tool windows, layouts, etc." And when hmm. we click this button, we get this list of window management commands. Uh, up the top is the full screen so that you can find and activate your full screen menu. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll shift enter, gets us out of that. Control slash W opens this menu. Here you can save your window layout and apply different layouts. Like if I want to jump to my laptop layout, yep. which I, I think <coughs> has Team Explorer on the right. Uh, there it is, Team Explorer is over the right. Mm -hmm. Now, there, uh, what else? Uh, there's recent windows, there's popular windows, so Solution Explorer, Output, Error List, and I'm going to be adding some other popular windows to this. And this is your recent windows. If there's a window you've yeah, been in nice. and it's not there, really useful if you have, let's say, closed Team Explorer yep. by accident yep. and don't know how to get it back again. Um, I, I'm not even sure. I think it's under View, there it is. You can find it under View Team Explorer, but it's nice to know that there, it will now be in the recent windows list and the Team Explorer cool. there. Now it's opened up, and it's opened up in auto-hide mode, which means that if I click over here, I lose it. Mm -hmm. and, and I want it to stay open. I can press slash M to open Team Explorer, but the minute I press escape or move on, yep. I lose it. I want that window to stay open. What you've got to do is you've got to press this tiny little pin yep. button here. And not this one, that'll close everything. And not this one, right. that'll do something different. Alternatively, you can choose Window Dock. So I've bound a shortcut to Window Dock, which is Control Insert. Takes over the old MS DOS mm. copy key, or paste key. But um, in this one, if I press Control Insert, it will dock that window. So now I can continue working, and that window stays yep. docked. I've also I've also bound a command to hide the most recent window. So I'm working here, and all of a sudden, I don't want that window. I want the space back. 
today, you'd have to navigate to that window and then carefully pick which button you want. Um, mm -hmm. I find that annoying. I'm working here. I just want to press a keystroke. So I've bound shift insert to hide the most recent window. Um, and shift insert will hide the next most recent window. Yeah, nice. And then I, I can toggle them back again. Alt F6 brings back the most recent window and you can cycle through Alt F6 to get your, your windows. And then control insert, uh, open up my solution explorer, control insert, and now they're docked again. <laughs> But also, wait, let's see, if I've got my output window, and again, I'm going to dock that. Uh, I might want to work like this, but I just quickly want to hide all my windows. Mm -hmm. There is a command I've put together, uh, it's called minimize all windows, and Alt-Shift-Insert gets rid of them all. Alt-Shift-Insert, bring them all back again, mm -hmm. so I can just quickly gain access to all my space. Mm -hmm. If I was in the output window, I can close that. Uh, oh, we've got more windows showing up there. No matter where we are, toggle windows, open and close. Very nice. kind of neat. I find that handy. Uh, what else? Oh, <laughs> one of my favorites. Let's see, uh, output window, let's hide that one. When you've got windows that are hidden, you notice that they take up room yep. and the bar's there. I don't like to waste space on my laptop because I, I don't have many pixels available. So we've introduced the, uh, I'm gonna show you the official inbuilt version. Where is it? Dun, 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 dun. Show sidebar tabs, or if I, Open Alt W, you'll see there's a B there. Show sidebar tabs. When I press that, they hide. Yeah. They go away. Alt W, B, they come back again. Mm -hmm. Isn't that nice? Now that's available in 15.8 Preview 2, which I'm lucky oh. enough to be using <laughs> okay. today. Uh, and it'll be coming out in a couple of months. But until then, I built a command into my extension, which is the Show Hide Tool Window Gutters, which does the same thing. But when, um, when the version comes out officially, mm -hmm. people will be able to take advantage of that. So, where were we? That was hot windows. So we can dock windows, hide windows, hide all, toggle, nice. close. Oh, and of course, reopen. Let's say I had Solution Explorer docked, and then I close it with Shift Escape. And this happens a lot. And you want to get back the most recent window. In a web browser, you'd press Control Shift T. Okay. So I've re uh, replicated that functionality. I want to press Control Shift T, it brings back the window you close. Cool. So now, knowing that, I can easily close my windows, work away. When I want my window open, control shift T, get back to work, and off we go. Lovely. So that's our hot windows extension. And it has no ratings and 32 installs. It's so fresh, it's so new. <laughs> Brand new. The icon, the paint on the icon is still drying. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's talk. Now, we've spoken a bit about keyboard shortcuts. Yep. So let's talk more about managing your keyboard shortcuts. It can be challenging today. I to want the, uh, the extension that helps me remember all these keyboard shortcuts. Oh, geez. Practice makes perfect. Yeah. Um, in, in tools options, you, the keyboard shortcuts are available. Where are we? It's not under project. It's under environment, keyboard. Oop, K, K for keyboard. And here, you can choose various mapping schemes, like the C, C++ mapping scheme or the C mm -hmm. sharp mapping scheme. And you can also look for and apply different shortcuts, like window.doc is the one we worked on before. We had control insert. And you can put different shortcuts here and uh, assign shortcuts that mm -hmm. way. Uh, it can be a bit fiddly to import and export settings. If you want to import and export keyboard shortcuts, there's tools, import and export settings. And you can export the settings. You mm -hmm. can import the settings. And if you ever do want to export keyboard settings, you just need to unclear all these, uncheck those boxes and expand the yellows until you find keyboard, export that. Okay. A little bit painful. I've tried to make that easy. If you've found some shortcuts and you want to save them, I've introduced this keyboard shortcuts menu on the yeah. tools menu mm -hmm. that lets you save your current shortcuts. And Is if that you wrong? do that, it pops up. What do you want to call it? And you give it a name. Uh, let's see, uh, my demo shortcuts. And now those keyboard shortcuts have been saved to this file. And so that I can will, now. That will roam? Well, that file is there on yeah. my system. Okay. I can share that with others. Um, but also, I can later restore to that. So okay. if I want to reset my sh shortcuts, I go right back to the base. Mm -hmm. And in fact, that deserves its own mention. If ever you've used some extensions that have changed your shortcuts, whether you've got Visual Assist, Resharper, or other extensions, and, or you yourself have fiddled with your shortcuts, 
Tools, keyboard, reset, clears everything back, and then that will also bring back any Visual Studio shortcuts that mm -hmm. have been hidden or overridden right. by the extensions that are no longer running. So that's useful on its own. But now that we've reset those, I want to load back all the shortcuts that I just had. Yeah. So I can say load shortcuts. And here's some I've prepared earlier. Uh, I'm going to load the My Demo shortcuts. And now those shortcuts have been imported. Mm -hmm. And I'll have available to me the shortcuts that we just saved. Cool. Let's have another look at this. Um, under Tools Keyboard, so we can load keyboard shortcuts. You can also scan your extensions. So if extension authors want to put keyboard shortcut files in their extensions, any user with this, well, it automatically scans on startup. But if you miss it, you can scan the extensions, which I've done already. And if it finds any shortcuts in those extensions, it will load them for you and prompt to put them in. So extension authors out there, if you see this, if you drop a VS Settings file or a uh, VSK into the root of your extension directory, mm -hmm. then this tool will pick it up and provide those shortcuts to the users. What else? Mapping schemes. This is what we saw earlier. Uh, there are more mapping schemes here than come with the product. I have created a bunch of mapping schemes for, uh, with the help of some others. Uh, there is the IntelliJ for C Sharp mapping scheme, ReSharper idea, mm -hmm. and ReSharper uh, C Sharp. These schemes are quite useful. If you're used to the ReSharper or IntelliJ mappings and yep. you come to the product, I might demonstrate them now. I really like the IntelliJ mappings because I did a lot of Java in my past. So I'll turn those on now. Now, with IntelliJ mappings, I press Control alt left to go to my previous location. Yeah. And I'll press Control w to expand selection. And I'll mm -hmm. press Control shift w to un expand. I'll press Control y to delete a line. So a completely different set of keyboard mappings available there. And I can easily switch them back by changing to a different mapping scheme, like the resharper scheme. Um, what do we get in? Uh, well, also, um, those, uh, what else have we got? A 2015, Visual Studio 2015. This has taken the normal Visual Studio keyboard mapping schemes and just added a couple of cool ones. Like now, Alt Left and Alt Right will go back and forward, which I just find really cool yeah. because that's what we do everywhere else in Windows and in all web browsers. Um, I've bound control page, uh, control page up and down to go to the file next to you and left and right. So these are just a few things that I've put into these. Cool. And those keyboard schemes are available in Hotkeys. Now, Hotkeys is the extension that delivers mapping schemes and shortcut okay. settings that users can download, have them available. And that's combined with the Keyboard Manager that allows you then to manage and maintain how you load and restore yep. and Very reset nice. keyboard shortcuts. So I'm actually going to put those demo shortcuts back on again because I think they were pretty cool. All right. So that's hotkeys and the keyboard shortcuts manager. What else have we got to look at? Oh, hot sauce. <laughs> Perhaps we've saved the best for last. I'm not sure. But how often have you wanted to? Every single time. <laughs> well, what I'm about to describe <laughs> is frequent operations that a developer goes through every day. I want to fetch or pull code to see if there's any new code that I need to be dealing with. I want to make a commit and I want to push that commit. Uh, maybe I want to check the, the history of this file. And so you got to go into the Team Explorer and you have to we open Team know Explorer. where those oh, things okay. are. You have to you do. go it, back and forth, it, back to the home page to go to a branch, and then you want to see. Where sink. are we? I'm oh trying to do it myself. Let's see. There's a button Oh, but down. there are things down there which are very handy and This helpful. is nice. If you've got a mouse yep. and like using mice, then you can press these shortcuts, uh, these buttons on the status bar. Yep. And the shortcut for them is this instance is Control alt f7 it's yeah. great if you can remember that and that'll open this page but that's not the page i want to pull so let's say i'll go to this page here it can get a bit fiddly um but trying to commit do you commit do, do you commit or and well, and push at the same time you got to hit that drop down and then you got to know that you have the opportunity it can be fiddly if i want to do a commit push, first yeah. first i open the changes page i go to the right. changes i have to click inside here so I've built some commands and bound them to the, sh to the team menu. So now there is a git operations uh, uh, menu with all of these commands that you this. want. Oops, sorry, I turned my head. Git operations. And now with shortcuts or accelerator keys, you can very easily, let's say we want to, um, well, let's try the commit. If I it just puts my cursor straight in the changes page. Mm -hmm. Now, if I want to, let's try some shortcuts on it. What are they? Team git. Uh, sorry, uh, Alt M, Git. I want to do a pull. Shortcut is L on that one, the accelerator key. 
Now, it has to switch pages. It was too quick. Um, so I'll try it again. Uh, what is the shortcut for it? It's Alt MG. Oops. Team Git. I should learn. So Control K. I've bound Control K by default to most of these things. You have to let go of the Control K of the Control key to hit the other characters, though. It's not oh. Control K Control L. It's just Control K L, because Control K. Because uh, oh, the, the others are bound to different shortcuts. So okay. So let's say I'm going to try pull, fetch, push. Um, control K L. Oh, unable to pull. That's because I don't have a branch bound. But the control keyboard, K, the shortcut's working. KF, there. Do you want to perform fetch? Yes, please. And so I, it runs the fetch operation. And if nothing else, there's just now a menu. <laughs> yeah, so now so you, you can actually have to find. go hunting around in the Team Explorer. For instance, did Not you Not that even there's anything wrong with the Team Explorer, but this is easier. There is current, I don't think these, uh, so here, here's some other menu items. Synchronize. This opens the synchronize page, which is open at the moment. If you want to uh, view the changes, that opens the changes page. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's similar to pressing these buttons down the bottom, but you don't need to move your mouse. I know they're sh shortcuts. Undo is useful. I'm going to do this undo, and it prompts to undo the changes that I've made to this file here. By the way, many of these items are available on the right click here. It, and this is, uh, <laughs> most people just don't know that they're there. But if right. you want to open your right click, that's where you'll get those changes there. Mm -hmm. um, also, there's shortcuts here to view history. Uh, new branch, manage branches, that again, you can only get if you manage to open up that little navigation right. bar, which, by the way, the shortcut is Control-Alt-F3. So if you want to, with your keyboard, you can go Control-Alt-F3 and then work up to view history. But instead, now, you can just team git, view branch history, or view file history. View file history is cool. It just shows you the changes on that file. And with yes. our new keys, control insert, that docks it down the bottom. It's nice, isn't it? Control shift insert brings yep. that back up again. Um, blame is another useful one. So on this file, I want to know who wrote each line. So give me the annotation for that. So it opens up. It looks like I've done most of the authoring on this file. <laughs> um, so that's the git blame. We've that's, got. That's just so judgmental. Tools get diff file, diff file. Oh, I've already done an undo, but let's say um, we make a change here, and now I can team get diff file D, D for diff. It opens up the file differ, and it shows me the changes on that file. Mm -hmm. So all of this without me having to pick up my mouse and go and work things out. Not only does it give me keyboard accessibility for, to it, but it gives me discoverability. Now I know yes. that I, I can actually do a new branch, manage branches, diff file, view yep. history. So that so uh, much easier. this is what all part of hot sauce. Hot sauce. I now, love if you're Australian, it. you say the words <coughs> sauce and sass the same. So hot sauce has got my hot sauce bottle with my sauce. By code the end icon. of today, I personally will increase the number of installs by ten percent. Oh, ten <laughs> percent! <laughs> Great. <laughs> yes. Ten downloads. That's very fresh. Again, the ink still drying on that icon <laughs> as well. So love it. Um, that's hot sauce. Really like that one. Now. Tip, oh, I should say, um, working with the team, many of these items we're hoping to bring into the product soon as people okay. are starting to recognize that we want uh, keyboard accessibility to these features. This is my new number one favorite extension. Well, that makes me very pleased. I'm, I'm pleased oh, to hear that. Now, of course, tip of the day, hot tips. This, if you install this extension, you'll start mm -hmm. getting tips. And I strongly encourage everybody to do this because I can't do shows every day to show people the cool things about Visual right. Studio, but I can keep adding tips into my tip of the day. So if you want to grab the tip of the day extension, then each time you, op you load a solution, while you're waiting for it to load, yep. pops up a tip, learn something new, cool. press next, next, next if you want to learn more. And what else have I got to show you? Oh, okay. This is something that's very handy in the product. This is developed by Daniel Griffin, uh, but I'm, I'm happy to promote it because it was, uh, I worked with him to make it happen. Here is, is what it delivers. With control slash slash, or whack whack as we call it, uh, we get a terminal window. And I'm going to expand the font size of this so that you can see with Control Shift Plus, you can see a bit better. So now I have a PowerShell window. I can, I can, it's a actually a fully interactive console window. So I can ask for my Git status. It comes out colored. Oh, I, it's cool. an interactive terminal if I want to do commit messages. Mm -hmm. uh, you can even switch to Bash, I think, if you have it installed. Uh, am I in Bash now? No, didn't yeah. work. But it, uh, there are other consoles that you can use from here. Mm -hmm. uh, that is available as WAC WAC terminal. So
That's not in the product yet, but it's really 30, handy. 3,000 installs, that's pretty popular. Yeah, that one went very popular. People have been waiting a long time to get a console window in yeah. Visual Studio. <laughs> this is the same console window that's used in VS Code. Mm -hmm. um, so go and get that one today. It's, it's really useful because when you open it in your project, notice you get the directory that you're right. in. So I can open this and immediately start doing git commands. That's the thing I use it for the most. Cool. And so what else? And to close that, we go here. So terminal window. Um, there's one other extension, the Sublime VS. Uh, for users who like the features of Sublime, the shortcuts that come with it, uh, they can download the Sublime VS extension. What it does is it bundles a handful of other extensions that other authors have written mm -hmm. and provides a bunch of shortcuts. <coughs> so then you can start to use Control-P to go to file, Control-Shift-P to, to search for commands, Control-D to select Word, Etc. And many of the Sublime commands that you're familiar with. So if you're interested in Sublime shortcuts, there's that extension available there. And that guts us, gets All us through. Right. Over there. Thank cool. you for having me on and having a look at my extensions. That was awesome. I hope there's some stuff in there that you find useful. I thought that was fine. Those are some really cool extensions. Thanks, Robert. So if you guys enjoyed that, go download a bunch of these, play around with them, send Justin feedback. Yes, you can provide feedback on the, uh, in the marketplace. There's question and answers, ratings and reviews, Perfect. so you can ask questions and leave feedback there. And we will see you next time on Visual Studio Toolbox.